Hey there, welcome or welcome back to Through Nikki's Lens. I am Nikki with another video here for you today. You have an express entry profile in the pool. You're waiting for an ITA that's an invitation to apply for permanent residency and you want to be ahead of the game and prepare your documentation in advance. So once you get your ITA, you can just validate the information, upload your document, and submit your PR application well in advance of the deadline. This is the video for you today. Let's get into it. There are various documents that you need to prepare for your PR application. Many of these documents are mandatory, some are optional. What you need to keep in mind though, that a lot of these documents are dependent on the answers that you provide for some of the questions. That's the questionnaire questions in the PR profile, as well as your work experience and things like that. So you need to prove certain things and provide evidence of the answers that you gave to IRCC. So as I mentioned, they're mandatory documents. Some of these documents you needed in advance in order to create your express entry profile. However, what's important to note is that you are sure that these documents are still valid. Say for example, your passport. This is a required document for your PR application. As I said, this is also necessary for your express entry profile, but what you need to do is to ensure that your passport is still valid and you have the soft copy, that's the bio, that's the information page as a PDF document and ready to go. The next thing that you need is an educational credential assessment, and this is not applicable to all candidates, but for those who actually have foreign education and they needed to have that evaluation done. Some persons might not choose to get their educational credential assessment done because their highest level of qualification is a Canadian qualification and it is not a mandatory thing to have your, your foreign credentials assessed in that instance. So this is optional and specifically for those people who do not qualify for Canadian experience class in most instances, you just need to know your specific situation, your circumstances, and if you need to have an educational credential assessment done on your qualification to see the equivalent to a Canadian degree. Proof of funds is another document that you need. You can get in advance. However, what I would recommend is Probably wait until you have gotten the invitation to apply closer to submitting the document, especially the, the bank statements, that they are up to date, that they are recent. However, there are some other proof of funds documents that you can have um, put together in advance. And note as well, those individuals that need to have proof of funds as part of their application. Generally, Canadian Experience class applicants are not required to have proof of funds, and you can check IRCC's website to have the most up-to-date information. Your work experience document, those documents are things that you need to have in advance, particularly your past work experiences. So all this information that I'm providing to you was taken from IRCC's website. And if you check the description of this video, I will provide you with that web page address that you can go and verify these details. In terms of your work experience document, you can gather those for your previous work experiences, but for your current job, it's best to wait until at least a week or a few weeks before you submit your PR application to get an, an updated employer verification letter from your employer and submit. But gather those necessary ones before and ensure that they have all the details that IRCC requires as proof to prove your previous work experiences. A police certificate 
is a required document for persons over the age of 18 years that have lived in a particular country outside of Canada for more than six months at a time. Those things you can gather in advance. If it is that you are a temporary foreign worker in Canada and you know for sure that you won't be returning to your country before you become a permanent resident, you can also start gathering that um, police certificate from your home country, it, especially in a case where you did not return to your home country before you came to Canada and you needed to get a police certificate to come to Canada. Whatever the, the situation is, based on how you answer the questions, you will have in your documents checklist as part of your PR application, a list of documents you need. Be guided by that and provide the necessary documents. And in cases where you made efforts and you did, do not get those documents in hand before you have to submit your PR application, make every effort to get them and put the evidence as part of the documents that you'll be submitting to IRCC if you cannot get, for example, your police certificate. And there are some countries that require for IRCC to um, send you a request in order to request the, the police certificate from them. So know what the police certificate requirement is from whichever country that you need to get one from and work accordingly. A medical examination or a medical report is another document that needs to be put in with your IRCC or PR application. However, that is not a mandatory upfront document. I believe it was as of June 2023 or something like that. I will definitely provide the correct date and you have to wait until IRCC requests your medical from you to have it done by a panel physician. A digital photograph is another document that you can prepare in advance. Be guided by the photograph specifications as well as how long before you submit your application those photos uh, should be taken. Any civil status document including marriage certificate, divorce or annulment certificate or common law union documents. These are mandatory and can be put in place in advance so that you don't have to go uh, searching for these documents, the soft copy of the documents. You can create a, a folder in your, on your laptop and ensure or your computer and ensure that you label your documents uh, properly and you gather all the documents in one folder so that you can easily access and find them. So another one is your children's information. A document such as the birth certificate to prove your relationship with a child in cases where there are and, and these are dependent children so there are other cases where there is uh, an adoption issue guardianship papers and if you have shared custody there are certain legal documentation that you must have translation documents if it is that you're from a country that your first language is not english you need and your documents are not in english or french you must get a translation document and these are certified translations and the of the original document and it needs an affidavit from a translator confirming the accuracy of that translation so there are some other documents that you need and you can prepare in advance. Those would be like a job offer and it could be a job offer supported by a positive LMIA or proof of that job offer that it is exempt from having an LMIA. This is generally a topic that I tend to stay away from because there's so much information that people need to delve into to get to understand what jobs are considered a valid job offer to get additional points from IRCC in your Express Entry profile. Do your research to see if this is something that you need. A general rule could be 
that once you're in Canada on an open work permit, it could be also a post-graduation work permit, a PGWP. In those instances, your job generally does not give you additional points for having a job offer. Your provincial nomination certificate is also another document, and this is in, for persons who have been nominated from a province. You went through the PNP uh, program for whichever province that you're living in or intending to live in Canada, and you get that nomination certificate. So this is proof or evidence of your nomination by a province, and the province will provide you with this document. So as I said again, these document or document checklist will be uh, built based on the information you put in your profile, based on your circumstances and how you answer the questionnaire question. I want to thank you so much for sticking to the end of this video. Please remember to share my video, to like the video as well, to share my channel with someone if you have not yet subscribed. Do not forget to subscribe and turn on your post notification so that once I post a video, you will be notified and you will be able to jump in and watch that video. Remember to comment, ask the questions that you have. I am on a journey to get a thousand subscribers and I want to ask for your continued support to get my subscribership up. I have reached one year of being on YouTube as of September 6th and it was a great year. There are times when I felt like I wanted to give up. It does take a lot to do these videos but I'm happy that I pressed on, that I continued to make the videos because I can see from the comments from persons reaching out to me on social media, on Instagram, on TikTok and they have been asking questions and just giving feedback that I have been helpful and I'm happy to help you. This is why I do what I do. And I wish you all the best in your endeavors. Thank you so much for making it through Nikki's Lens and I'll see you in my next video.